Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Queuing Up Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Damian Rocha Jr. I almost messed up the intro, but that is okay because that is not uh, a professional thing to do, and I'm not a professional. But going right into it here, this is going to be another one of those quick queue episodes where it's just a quick little thing I wanted to talk about or just get off my chest or I'm really excited about. For some of you who don't know, uh, my favorite anime of all time is Dragon Ball Z. And if you are under a rock or living there, uh, within the last two years, they have announced a, another Budokai Tenkaichi game for Dragon Ball Z, which for some of you don't know, the last sequel that came out for that game was number three in 2007. So it's been about 17 years since we got another like extension of the game. And that's what we're getting here in a couple days when you see this. But the reason why I want to talk about this is because I just wanted to go over just three, probably three, if not five, but let's go with three, three easy steps on how to become in a sense like not a better player at the game but to like how do i explain it just to you know what let's just say three easy steps to become better at dragon ball sparking zero now let's get right on into it here just so i don't waste your guys's time because like i said it's gonna be a quick little episode just a quick little snippet while you're waiting in line or driving somewhere that's less than 15 minutes this that and the third step one what you're gonna want to do here is you're gonna want to find let's say find a victim and by victim, I mean find a friend, find someone who's willing to keep playing online matches with you, whether it's a random, your brother, your sister, uh, someone you've known for all your life. Basically, what you're going to do is find somebody and you're going to find a target and you're going to keep going at this person. The reason for that is because you're going to have a lot of practice with this person. Now, sometimes you might want them to be either around the same level as you, if not better because this is going to push you to get better every time you fight. So for example, if me and this guy here are having, like say, a back and forth, and he starts learning new tricks that I don't know, and he's not telling me, then that means that I, as a person, can't let this guy here, like, one-up me. You know, I'm going to have to go into training mode. I'm going to have to look at the... uh settings or look at the button mapping i'm gonna have to force myself to do stuff once our little squabble is over because he now knows more than me see what i'm saying like you're gonna keep going up and up and you guys are gonna keep one upping each other and it's gonna be something like uh it's like a rivalry that's basically what it is and the reason for that is like i said you want to get better at the game so you're gonna want to fight, like continuously fight somebody who is going to have the same commitment as you or at least everyone has that like one friend that's really good at video games and it's either they're really good at it or they're just good at picking up video games. Or what I mean by this is you can have somebody who plays video games every day, all day, and you have somebody who can pick up a controller for 10 minutes who has never heard of this game, never played this game, but within that 10 minutes, he's either as good as you or better than you. So you just want to kind of find that friend in the group. And I'm the friend who picks up the controller for 10 minutes, whereas the friend that I'm talking about, this guy, if you forgot who he is, He's the one who plays, in my opinion, more video games than me. Like, he plays a plethora of games versus me who plays, like, certain games, if that makes sense. Like, I play one to two, like, one to two to three games. He plays basically any game. He has more experience with other games than I do. But with that being said, quick and easy step one. Step two is upgrading your trash talk. Now, for some of you who were confused at this point, you might be saying to yourself, well, how is this going to make me better at the game? Because if there is microphones involved, if you can get into the head of your opponent, you're already won. That's it. So the way to upgrade your trash talk is you don't want to be like everyone else. You don't want to be the person who says mean things, racial things, dark humor, stuff like that, threatening them. No, no, no. no. That's, that's old school Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 days. You want to evolve. You want to get... You want to get personal, but not to the point where you make them cry. You just want to throw them off their game. For example, this guy, you're going to see him a lot in this story because I'm going to keep referring to him. Whenever you see my hand like this, I hope that I edit it to have him pop up. Long story short, what you're going to want to do or kind of get into is the habit of knowing your enemy. So let's say... If it's just a random online guy that just keeps rematching you because he wants to beat you and there's a microphone process, you're just going to want to say something like, let's say he's trying to do a combo that you know, but he keeps dropping it. 
You're just going to be like, wow, you dropped that combo like a penny. Be like, what? What do you mean? And be like, he's going to sit there and think about what does he mean? I dropped that combo like a penny. Well, here's the thing. A lot of people drop pennies. You want to know why? Because they're not paying attention or they don't care about it. So that's going to have him thinking that you think he doesn't care about this combo. That's why he keeps dropping it like a penny. See what I'm saying? So in my case, I would talk to my friend here. And as we're going back and forth, I'll be like, just doing, let's say we're just going back and forth, hitting each other in the game, doing whatever. Our health is getting lower and lower. And I just, out of nowhere, just does, has nothing to do with what's going on in the game. I'm just like, this is why you walk funny. You're put, what? And that's going to throw him off for a couple seconds. But it's not that effective. Now, each, each insult has to be unique in its own way to throw them off, right? So if I just say you walk funny... Everyone walks funny at one point in their life, whether it be as a child, toddler, teenager, if you've had an accident, if you have like, you know, like if there's something there at one point in your life, you have walked funny. I know I have. I hurt my hip, so I kind of like hobbled everywhere. Is it hobbled? Hobbled. Hobbled. Anyways, I limped. I limped everywhere, so it looked kind of goofy. And what made that walk goofy is that I tried hiding the limp, so it looked even weirder. But like I said, it's when you get more personal with them without being too in, like too insulting so for example we're fighting we're fighting and let's say he refers to himself as the big cheese or something like that right like he's like oh i'm the big cheese around here be like that's crazy because you're lactose intolerant and then just keep going and be like what what does that have to do with anything like you see what i'm saying just throw them off for a couple seconds just to just to get inside their mind and if you really want something that's going to sting but not make them cry or like feel bad about themselves is for me, I would just look at it and be like, this is why you're bad at math. And then just leave the game or just like leave the discord and just let that sit in his head. That that has nothing to do with the game. That his scholastic adventures in math have nothing to do with what we're doing in the game. See what I'm saying? So you want to upgrade your trash talk to not only be necessarily unique, but just to be almost like playground insults with a little bit of flavor to them. Because in my opinion... Someone could call me stupid, ugly, stuff like that, like more harsh things, but it won't affect me as simple as you look cross-eyed. You kind of like fix the way you look or like you're trying to like, wait, I'm not cross-eyed, stuff like that. Try to be as honest as a kid would be is what I'm saying with your insults. Use a, use a child's honesty while talking trash in this game to one of your friends or that random guy who keeps rematching you. Now, last but not least, for step number three. This one is very crucial. So, for example, if the first two steps are kind of rocky where you get different people, but at least you can still do number two or vice versa, you have someone who can't hear what you're saying, but you can get, you can get past one or the other. But step three is very crucial. Now, what this is, is you're going to have to back up what you say with at least one specific character, right? So what you're going to want to do is take the time to learn one character, whether it be your favorite character, the strongest character in the game, the weakest character in the game. You want to have that one trick because no matter how much he calls you or she calls you or they call you a one trick pony, you only are good at one person. You're only going to do this one thing. Here's the problem with that. They're going to prepare for that. They're going to anticipate that. They're going to put that in their regiment. They're going to put that in their schedule. They're going to put that in their training. They're going to make sure that they have every feasible way to counter that one character. Now, you might think to yourself, well, if I get good with this one character, wouldn't that be a problem if my opponent counters them? Yes, normally it would. But here's the thing with that. You build around your best character to make up for the flaws that you know it's going to have against your opponent. For example, my favorite character is Piccolo. He's my favorite hero throughout Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super. Favorite villain is Cell. Now, some people will look at Piccolo, and let's say Piccolo has, let's say they had physical stats in the game. Piccolo has high defense, nice attack, but he lacks somewhere, let's say, speed. So he would have fast characters. Now, me, I would build around Piccolo's weakness and get at least one to two speedy characters or someone as a backup character that I know can counteract that. Now, this is basically going into if we do team battles, because there are team battles in this new game coming out, and that is something that me, this guy, we're talking about. But it's going to be 
uh, something that you can build around having that one good character so you don't waste as much health or waste as much time while he's whittling down your best character. You can take these mediocre to lesser characters that you know and not only, you know, try new things with them, but like you can also be like, okay, next time I know that this character has a counter so I can keep using that or try to like, you know, use that in more, um, how do I explain it? Use that in more unique ways in the fight instead of just hard countering. I can use them like mid combo, stuff like that. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, the best way to do that is find the counter to your character and play against them when you have the time. The reason for that is because you're going to figure out how that guy's going to combo you. You're going to find out how he's going to react to you, how he's going to react, uh, how you're going to react to him. So it's like, for example, if you had someone who's super fast, but you had someone who's super durable, which means the fast guy doesn't have power enough power to do enough damage to him. You're going to find different ways to beat him, whether it's through time, whether it's through keeping your space and spacing him out, doing little bits of damage here and there, you know, stuff like that. But the reason, like I said, this is so crucial is because you can do all the other stuff. You can, like I said, find that opponent, know that opponent, get to learn about them. Second, upgrading your trash talk, getting inside their head, stuff like that. Because if you apply those first two steps to this third step, in, in my case, I have found success in this. Not 100%. I'd say about 85% of the time, it will be in your favor. So with that being said, I hope that you find that these three things are very useful, very, you know, good for you. But the sole purpose of this episode was to just talk about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero more than anything, because trying to avoid all of the spoilers online is absolutely driving me mad. Like, I can't go on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, any form of media without somebody being like, oh, hey, look, I got the game early. This is what this is. This is how this looks. I'm like, no, cool, block, cool, not interested, cool, get out of here. You know, things like that. But overall, I'll start bringing this episode to a close because like I said, I want to keep it about 15 minutes under, something like that, just a quick little snippet of it. But uh, basically, yeah, not even basically, this is the end of the episode. I appreciate everyone for coming to listen. And for the two people that I'm, that I'm going to talk trash to, the one person you have been seeing, this guy one last time, uh, I can't wait to hand you every physical feeble L that you have ever had in your life. And I do solemnly, I think I'm using that word right, I solemnly swear that I will make your life suck in this game. Soon as you see me rip that, just take out Piccolo, you're going to hate me for the rest of your life. And to the other friend, you know who you are because you haven't seen a picture of yourself. You want to know why? Because I want you to feel like you're missing out on what I'm doing, you know? Everyone has seen the other friend who I've referred to, but they haven't seen you, and that's okay. But, you know, that being said, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate all the listeners. I do appreciate all the patience you guys had with me because I'm very slow with getting videos out, with making extra podcast episodes, this, that, and the third. All that being said, I'll catch you guys in the lobby the next time you decide to queue up.